the Morgantown City Council regular meeting. We're in the Monongahela <coughs> County Commission Chambers at 243 High Street, second floor, Morgantown, West Virginia. And it is Tuesday, July 19th, uh, 2022, and it's a little bit after 7 p.m. And we're calling this meeting to order, and we're going to ask the clerk, she would please call the roll. Joe Buganum? Present. Bill Kowecki? Here. Ixia Vega? Here. Deputy Mayor Trumbull? Here. Dave Harshbarger? Here. Brian Butcher? Here. Mayor Sleen? Here. Thank you very much. Now we're going to pledge right over here. <laughs> Everyone, please stand. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States, States of America. America to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all i'd like to thank the clerk for uh and andrew stacy from communications for um, all of the arrangements here and we'd like to thank the county commission for the use of their chambers um, we're working on approval of the minutes. There's two sets of minutes, July 5th, 2022, special meeting minutes, July 5th, 2022, regular meeting minutes. Are there any additions and cor or corrections? And then, um, if you just want to put your hand up, we agree. Thank you very much. And, um, now we're on correspondence. Are there any items of correspondence today? Public hearings. We have two public hearings. These are specific public hearings. Um, so uh, if you would like to speak, um, you would come to the podium. Um, an ordinance amending section 171301, adopting state building code revisions and adopting section 171302. And um, so we're going to open that public hearing. If anyone is wishing to speak, you come to the podium and speak. And we're going to close this public hearing. Then item B, an ordinance amending Article 172 of the City Code entitled Sister Cities Commission to expand membership for non-residents. So we're going to open this, this public hearing. <coughs> there's anyone wishing to speak just on this item only all right we're going to close this public hearing and now we're on unfinished business boards and commissions I do not believe that we have any um, boards and commission board and commission positions to approve at this time is that correct yeah. all right <coughs> Now we're to the public portion, which shall be subject to rules established by council and adopted by resolution. And those include that you would come to the podium, you would state your name and your address, uh, and you would have three minutes to speak. So we're going to open this. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sean Sikora. I live at 3 Merrifield Street. I'm in the 7th Ward, and I'm also a county commissioner. Um, I'm just here today to welcome you guys to our chambers and um, you know I have the unique position of being on commission uh, I'm your constituent and you're mine so I'm the, I'm the only uh, county commissioner who can say that so this is really important to me that you know we're working together and you guys are you know we're able to help you out uh, during this time when you need accommodation so welcome we're here any way we can help you and um, you know hopefully uh, you guys can operate, uh, you know, just like your home. So, and I hope you consider this your home for the next couple of months or how long, however long you take. A year. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my president's here, uh, Tom Bloom. And Tom. Tom Bloom, 1021 Ashton Drive, Morgantown, West Virginia. And it is a little unique for us to sit here and look at you all, but I'll tell you, <laughs> you all did a great job. I think it looks really nice, and we really like that you took the monitors down because that's one of the problems when. Sean doesn't have the problem, but I have the problem of seeing and overseeing the monitor. But hopefully down the road you can see we're changing with the technology here, and we haven't 
been trained on it yet, so once we get trained on it, we, you're more than welcome to use it. We just at this time do not have it. But again, if there's anything that you see or any uh, bugs to work out, please, you know, I want to thank Christine. She made it real easy to work with Renetta, and so thank you, and I hope you have very successful meetings, and maybe it's a good sign that you have it here and you don't have the, the crowds that you mm -hmm. have <laughs> usually. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Will Dean? I just thought that was a side issue. <laughs> you are here and present. We appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anyone else you do not have to sign in to speak? It just helps to get things organized to begin with. If there's anyone else interested in speaking, this is your moment. All right, we're going to close this public portion. Now we have um, special committee reports. Uh, and I don't believe we have anything in those reports at this time. Um, we are still interviewing and um, making selections for the Police Review and Advisory Board. And we are going to be scheduling a special meeting on unsheltered homelessness. Is there anyone on that committee uh, who would like to speak on um, unsheltered homelessness issues? Now we are going to move on to the consent agenda. <clears throat> These items we're going to vote on, unless someone uh, together, unless someone chooses to take one of them out from underneath the consent agenda. So the first item is consideration of approval of a second reading of an ordinance amending section 171301, adopting state building code revisions and adopting section 171302. First reading was 7 5 2022. Additionally, we're cons there's consideration item B, consideration approval of second reading of an ordinance amending article. 172 of the city code entitled Sister Cities Commission to expand membership for non residents. The first reading was 7 5 2022. Mm -hmm. um, is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. And then if the clerk would please call the roll, unless somebody wishes to take something outside of the consent agenda. Joe Blue Gonham? Yes. Bill Kowecki? Yes. <coughs> Ixia Vega? Yes. Deputy Mayor Trumbull? Yes. Dave Harshbarger? Yes. Brian Butcher? Yes. Mayor Celine? Yes. Passes unanimously. New business. Consideration of approval of first reading of an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2022-2023 annual budget of the City of Morgantown as shown in the revised budget, revision 01. Attached here to and made a part of this ordinance is the same applies to the general fund. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. If, you, if it uh, please the council, I would uh, uh, ask that our our finance director, Mr. Tennant, uh, make a presentation on this. He's worked really hard to to make this happen and knows those figures really well. Yes, please. <laughs> Good evening, Council. This is the uh, first revision of the 2022-2023 uh, budget, uh, and it's the carryover calculation or an assigned fund balance calculation required by the state auditor's office. Uh, essentially, uh, we're going to carry over any excess or unused uh, funds from uh, the preceding year into this year. Uh, before I get too far into it, I'm going to apologize right off the bat. I have one change for you already, uh, if I may. Um, I budgeted some gas for a new truck in capital escrow instead of the appropriate fund, arts and culture. So I'm asking if we could please move $5,000 out of account 444, contributions and transfers to other funds, uh, down to arts and humanities, uh, uh, account 906. 
uh, that'll get the uh, gas for a new truck in the appropriate appropriate line. Um, That's noted. Okay. The carryover. Uh, my suggestion is to carry over uh, an additional three million three hundred ninety-six thousand uh, dollars to this year. Uh, that will make the total carryover what we included in the original budget uh, plus this revision a uh, total of six million six hundred forty six thousand uh, dollars Now my suggestion or recommendations on how to use this money is as follows uh, First I'm suggesting we waive the ten thousand dollars administration fee that uh, finance typically charges to the airport uh, we charge them an admin fee for you know, accounting, uh, payroll, HR services that we provide. Uh, airport took on some of uh, the city's employees, uh, mostly code, I believe. So they're incurring some increased costs uh, related to those employees in the form of utilities and, and supplies. Uh, so I talked to the airport director and uh, asked if we could waive the fee if that would make up the difference and he agreed to that. So that would be the first revision. Um, second, I'm suggesting we transfer $539,360 to the capital escrow fund, uh, which appears as line 444 uh, on your sheets. Uh, and this would be to partially fund Bopark's uh, capital request. Uh, the remaining 225, almost 226,000, I believe we can make up that difference when we do the capital escrow carry forward. Uh, calculation which will be coming uh, in the next few weeks. Um, in addition to the capital escrow uh, bow park piece, um, suggesting $9,732, uh, and that is for a new truck lease uh, for the arts and culture uh, department. Uh, we needed a truck for some maintenance and towing of some of their equipment. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Next, I'd like to add $25,700 to the employee pensions. Uh, the latest actuarial report from GSR uh, increased the required percentage, the city percentage, from 20.49% uh, to 20.95%. So $25,000 will make that up. Um, suggesting $180,000 carryover from the preceding year for police vehicles. Uh, those vehicles have been ordered. Uh, it's a lease through Enterprise, but as of yet, uh, everything is, is back ordered on those. We're still looking at several months wait time on those vehicles. Uh, suggesting $25,336 also for the police department and that will cover some back ordered ammo and safety vests uh, that they just simply could not get uh, this year, or excuse me, in, in last year. Uh, fuel, going to be a little proactive this year with, with the increased fuel costs. Back when we did the original budget, January, February, uh, fuel has taken quite an increase um, since then. Uh, so I would like to add uh, $59,000 to the police budget, $12,500 to the fire bu budget, and $58,000 to the streets budget, all for fuel costs. Uh, $35,500 uh, carryover uh, for the fire department ladder truck repair. Uh, we received an insurance payment uh, in last fiscal year. Uh, but the repairs have not been made yet, so we'll carry that amount to cover, or at least in part, uh, the repairs. Uh, also, a carry over uh, 129,000 in city manager, and 243,000 in code, and this is for the new permitting and asset management uh, software. Um, that was part of the last revision that I presented to you all. It just didn't happen as fast as we thought so it's it's now getting underway and I believe we have a kickoff uh, next week on that software uh, the carry over the comp time payout of three hundred and sixty two thousand uh, dollars that was also presented in the last budget revision but that did not happen until this last pay the comp time payout uh, was uh, just occurred recently so carry that amount forward to cover 
200,000 for a correction to the fire department overtime line. Uh, this was actually uh, my error. Um, the original budget request had some additional FTEs included, uh, so we cut the overtime budget uh, down. Later, those FTEs were removed, uh, but I did not go back and increase the uh, overtime uh, to what historically uh, ran. Uh, so this will put us back up to where we where we usually are. Uh, with this upcoming year, there's lots of variables uh, to consider in uh, not only fire, but for uh, salaries uh, across the board. Uh, so I, I think we've included enough and maybe just a little bit of cushion in there to, to cover uh, any overtime that may occur. Um, 575,000 uh, dollars asking this as a you know a one-time uh, COVID relief uh, and inflation payout to employees. Um, the exact method and details have not been determined yet. Uh, but this would not exceed the 575,000 I'm presenting to you all. Uh, today I looked at the latest uh, CPI uh, that was recently published. Uh, the June 12 months into June 30th, uh, inflation was at 9.1%. So I think anything that we could get, give the employees uh, would certainly help out. And just an additional item, gas uh, for vehicles. Uh, inflation was 60% for the same same 12 month period. And then finally, would like to add 862,000 to the contingency line. That would bring that total up to 1.5 million, which is what we carried through uh, last year, uh, just to, to cover any unknowns that, that may come up uh, throughout 22, 23. Any questions? Thank you. What other questions might anyone here have? I can see I get to practice doing this. <laughs> Anything that you wanted to add to that? Uh, uh, no, the one the one point I would like to like to and maybe uh, Mr. Ten can we uh, the the quality of budgeting budgeting that we do is often reflected in in how we utilize uh, contingency funds. If we don't do a real good job uh, budgeting, oftentimes we're dipping into the contingency fund significantly. Uh, you want to talk about last year, kind of how we did with uh, uh, using contingency funds for issues? We only used about $200,000 of contingency uh, money last year. Uh, in part, I think uh, we did a pretty good job budgeting, but also uh, revenues in certain areas, uh, particularly B&Os. Uh, it exceeded expectations. So that last budget present or revision uh, that I gave you all for uh, 22 uh, covered m most of that. So uh, yeah, two two hundred thousand was only was what we used out of the 1.5 million dollars last year. Thank you. So. Second. Thank you. All in favor? <laughs> Ask the clerk. <laughs> I don't think I've done that before. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> Joe Buganum? Yes. Bill Kowecki? Yes. Ixia Vega? Yes. Deputy Mayor Trumbull? Yes. Dave Harsh Barker? Yes. Brian Butcher? Yes. Mayor Selene? Yes, passes unanimously. Item B, consideration of approval of a first reading of an ordinance amending fiscal year 2022-2023 annual budget of the city of Morgantown as shown in the revised budget. Revision <coughs> 01 attached here to and made a part of this ordinance is the same request to the coal severance fund. And I will turn it over to the city manager and he will turn it over to the finance director. <laughs> same, same exercise, uh, just a lot smaller numbers in the coal severance fund. 
uh, same carryover calculation, uh, requesting $85,111 be carried over to the new year. Uh, main reason for that carryover is uh, the second and third quarter uh, amounts from Cole Severance uh, remained in the account. Boat Park did not request the, the last two quarters. Uh, that totaled a little over $60,000. And then the fourth quarter, uh, which we normally receive uh, the middle of July, uh, was an additional $25,000 to make up the eighty-five. dollars um, And in, in addition to the carryover, uh, we're also asking to increase the revenue uh, from Cole Severance uh, from $55,000 to $80,000. Um, thought that was a fairly conservative estimate, um, but the latest numbers was just published uh, by the state for the fourth quarter, and it exceeded $40,000. So uh, the last five quarters uh, for Colt Severance uh, has jumped fairly significantly from, uh, I think the fourth quarter of last year was about $16,000. Now we're up to $40,000 in a quarter. So going to increase the revenues, but more than likely uh, sometime in the middle of the year, I'll come back and request that they be raised again. Um, took 3,000 of that revenue increased and put it in contingency, and that would give us the allowed 10% in contingency, and then the rest will go to Bow Park uh, for their needs. So um, let's have a motion and then we can ask questions. Yeah, I move to approve. Thank you. Second. Thank you. And are there any questions on the Cole Severance Fund? This is exciting for Bow Park. We use that for special events and entertainment. So next summer should be really fun. <laughs> That's right. We'll take it. We'll take it. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, if the clerk would please call the roll. Yes. Joe Buganum? Yes. <coughs> Bill Kowecki? Yes. Ixia Vega? Yes. Deputy Mayor Trumbull? Yes. Dave Harshbarger? Yes. Brian Butcher? Yes. Mayor Celine? Yes. Passes unanimously. Item C, consideration and approval of a resolution approving and authorizing to submit to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, the fiscal year 2022 Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, annual action plan. City Manager. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the approval of this uh, resolution will authorize City Manager on behalf of the City of Morgantown to uh, file an application for financial assistance with the um, U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, uh, which has indicated that actually a willingness to make available some funds, some carryover funds. Um, out of the CDBG uh, grant program in the amount of $448,962. And uh, this, uh, this or, uh, ordinance would also authorize city manager to be able to sign any and all documents regarding uh, these programs and their administration. Thank you. Um, it would be great if we had a motion here. Move to accept. Second. Thank you. And then, if there are any questions about this um, annual black grant action plan. Well, if there are no questions, then if the clerk would please call the roll. Yes. Joe Buganum? Yes. Bill Kowecki? Yeah. Ixia Vega? Yes. Deputy Mayor Trumbull? Yes. Dave Harshbarger? Yes. Brian Butcher? Yes. Mayor Celine? Yes. Passes unanimously. Thank you. D, consideration of approval of a resolution approving and authorizing the submittal to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban, Urban Development, HUD, uh, of the subs substantial amendment to the fiscal year 2020 community development block grant coronavirus CDBG-CD annual action plan. So city manager. Thank you. Um, some of you 
that on this on this body back in uh, 20, uh, 2020, March, March of 2020, when the Coronavirus Relief and Economic Security, or CARES Act, was passed. And we received uh, various funding as a city over, over uh, the, the intervening years. Um, the city of Morgan time, Town, through this, uh, the acceptance of this, um, approving this resolution, would uh, receive an allocation from the CDBG coronavirus CV uh, funds in the amount of 458576 and uh, in order to do that, we have to amend uh, the, the city's um, uh, 2020 annual action plan, CDBG action plan, to include these CB funds in its 2020 annual ac action plan. So it's uh, proposed that uh, the CDBG CB activities include um, uh, $50,000 to go to United Way for rent and utility assistance programs. Uh, one hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars to, um, I'm sorry, one hundred fifty thousand dollars for the CB for the United Way. Uh, we also propose two hundred thousand dollars be awarded to the Food Pantry Assistance Program that, um, uh, in order to provide services as, and also. Uh, and a, a total of $250,000 to the Norwood Fire Station improvements that is, is underway to help su uh, supplement the monies that have already been allocated for that project and allow us to get to some additional projects uh, completed. Um, this allows then, authorizes the city manager to uh, submit and, and, and uh, the, the substantial amendments, the 2020 substantial amendments to, to the annual action plan to the U.S. Department of uh, Housing and Urban Development. Thank you. Is there a motion? Move to accept. Second. Thank you. Are there any questions? Um. So, I guess I'm a little confused. So, <laughs> 2020. yeah, 250,000 to Norwood, 200,000 to Food Pantry, 150,000. That's 600,000. We decreased the line line item budget to, to United Way by fifty thousand dollars. So. I, all I can tell you is that's what was, <laughs> was presented. Do <laughs> you have any thoughts? Yeah. Uh, so I think the food pantry assistance program is actually being paid under the state level CDBG CB funds, um, which was the additional funding we got. So um, this is our um, our city allocation, the roughly four hundred thousand dollars that's been programmed. That the proposed two hundred and fifty to the fire station. Uh, improvement project and then the $150,000 for the rent and utility assistance uh, are state level. Uh, we applied for a grant and received $500,000 in both of those. Um, so we, on top of this amount, we had an additional $1 million between uh, food pantry and rent and utility assistance. And because we were able to secure that grant, um, we were looking at can we reallocate some of these funds uh, to help other projects and further extend. And this particular part of the CDBG CV activities uh, tied to the fire station would be um, creating the separate bunk rooms. One of the things we found that um, with how uh, the, the current sleeping arrangements were, you know, once one person in the, the fire station was ill, everyone got ill because of just the shared sleeping mm -hmm. quarters and, you know, the living with others. So really we're talking 150 for rent and utility and 250 per. I think every oh, particular one. Right. Pretty cool. So yeah. And I think the rest of it is um, administrative costs to pay someone to come up with these documents and to ensure all the paperwork is getting done. Like any good federal program, there's a lot of paperwork. Thank you. Good question. <laughs> is there anyone else to ask? What's Wishing to ask a question, and if the clerk would please call the roll. Joe Boo Ghanim. Yes. 
Bill Kowecki? Yes. Ixia Vega? Yes. Deputy Mayor Trumbull? Yes. Dave Harshbarger? <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> Brian Butcher? Yes. Mayor Celine? Yes, passes unanimously. Consideration of uh, item E, consideration of approval of a vacant structure exemption request for 400 Beechhurst Avenue. Um, if I turn this over to the city manager. Uh, I'll, I'll have the, the city attorney address this. This is similar to the item we had last uh, on the last agenda where we, we postponed action on it till, till a later date and we're asking the same consideration on this one. Anything you want to add to that? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you, Kent. The, the city's vacant structures code directs the council to place on its agenda an exemption request after it's received, but allows for scheduling of that at a later date. So if, uh, if council would entertain a motion to direct staff to schedule that hearing at a time that's convenient for the applicant and for council, we can make that happen. Wonderful. Is there anyone willing to make that motion? I'll support that motion. Thank you. Second. Great. So we're setting this at a later date, and if the clerk would please call the roll. Oh, was there any questions? Sorry. Any questions on this? Mm -hmm. All right. If the clerk please. Joe Buganum? Yes. Bill Kowecki? Yes. Ixia Vega? Yes. Deputy Mayor Trumbull? Yes. Dave Harshbarger? Yes. Brian Butcher? Yes. Mayor Celine? Yes. Passes unanimously. Uh, now it's time for the city manager's report. Thank you. Uh, had the privilege last Friday uh, with, um, the, with Mayor Celine and Deputy Mayor Trumbull to visit with the uh, editorial board of the paper. And we spent almost two hours, if I, an hour and a half at least. Uh, just discussing issues related to what's going on in the city. A lot of it had to do with uh, um, the personnel stuff that, uh, that we're going through. And I, th I thought it was a, uh, an excellent discussion. I, I, we were able to give a good background as to why we're where we're at and give some, uh, uh, some details surrounding that. Um, I think what it's, it's doing, and you read the, uh, the editorial that came out of that, uh, that meeting or followed that meeting. I thought it was very, uh, it, it was very well said, and it certainly wasn't taking any size, but it ex expressed the, the issue very well. And I think that's what's, uh, with that level of trust that we're trying to develop, I think it, it, uh, it helps in the, in the uh, presentation of facts on different issues. But it was, it was a great meeting. I, I really appreciated that. Also, we had, uh, today we had a meeting with members of the uh, MUB uh, leadership and uh, worked on some details, tried to hammer out some details on a, an agreement regarding the reservoir and, and, and use of surrounding property for recreational purposes. Um, I think both sides were able to express in detail any concerns they had. I, we're, we're all on the same page. And uh, they simply want to protect their water supply, which we want to do, right? And we simply want to be able to use, uh, capitalize on that wonderful asset to provide recreational services. And it doesn't, as long as the two don't interfere with one another, I think we're in good shape. And so uh, uh, the city attorney was, uh, it, it has, it has revised the agreement that uh, we, we submitted out to take into account the, the information and the discussion that we had today. And I think that I, I'm hopeful that uh, soon that will be able to be put to rest and, and we'll be able to move forward. Um, we'll continue to have meetings with, uh, with the Morgantown Utility Board just to, I mean, we're part of the same organization. Sometimes we, we think we're different, but uh, in so many ways we're tied together. Finally, um, just know that uh, staff is working to create mechanism where we can have transfer of property, uh, city property that would no, not uh, have any significance to the city in the future, but could have significant uh, impact on further development of the Richwood project. And uh, so we're in, right in the middle of, of doing that, of working with MAP 
uh, for transfer of certain properties as well as uh, through the land reuse agency to provide ownership of that, those properties so that it'll stimulate uh, the, the development of phase one uh, of that project and it'll, it'll be amazing once we do it. We, uh, we met with, uh, uh, with our uh, regional transportation folks, Bill Austin and, and the county commission and others last week and one of the issues we talked about in detail was uh, to include uh, Willie Street and its entrance into, into the Richwood project to, to create a really nice corridor into the downtown and a connection to that area. And so from various, uh, from, from a number of different uh, uh, perspectives, we're, we're really trying to, to jumpstart that program and, and it, it requires uh, the involvement of private sector and so trying to um, coordinate private, public, and quasi-public organizations all at the same time. It, it, it's not an easy thing to do, but we're, we're trying to get everything established so that we can move forward on that project. I think we'll see some movement there in the next month or two. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Great. Does anyone have any questions? We're good. Um, report from City Clerk. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, sharing once again the um, we're pleased to announce that the Fire Civil Service Commission is accepting applications for entry level firefighter. Uh, applications can be received um, at the City Clerk's office, which is at 430 Spruce now. Um, they can also be submitted uh, online by way of our website at morgantownwv.gov. Um, I want to share that the firefighters have really worked hard. They've had um, two open houses and had some uh, great success, uh, good turnout, and in um, giving those candidates the opportunity to see what it's going to be like on agility testing day. So the um, agility test is a Saturday, July 30th at 8 a.m., and that's at Northside Fire Station. Uh, folks will want to apply first <laughs> before they um, show up, so they can reach out to the city clerk's office if they, if they have any questions about that. Um, I also want to remind folks that the Municipal League conference is happening uh, in less than a month on August 2nd through the 5th at the uh, waterfront, and um, so if you would like to attend and even if you're only attending a little bit um, reach out to me and I will get you signed up we want to be there and support our deputy mayor who will be speaking I believe on Thursday the 4th at 8 30 so I'll 9 30 9 30 thank you so well, I'll let um, deputy mayor uh, Trumbull share information on that but um, also our GIS analyst Marvin um, Davis will be presenting on um, how the GIS uh, capabilities ha uh, assisted our last election. And um, I, I know we had a lot of uh, folks from other cities who were interested in how we did what we, um, what we did with the survey and uh, polling places and whatnot. So um, sharing that. Um, looking forward to all of our, uh, um, our friends from other cities to come in and meet up once again um, and that concludes my report thank you very much mm -hmm. report from our city attorney thank you mayor uh, with council's adoption of the building code updates this evening we will uh, get that ordinance forwarded to the state fire commission so their records are updated and the building code remains in effect that ordinance also included uh, local provisions for the building code board of appeals that's established in So that board's already in existence, but will operate now under the, uh, the rules directly set forth in the city code. I think that uh, council has a vacancy or two on that board. Um, we have prepared hearing procedures for them and uh, worked with uh, the building official and development services staff uh, on those procedures, and we'll be presenting those to the board as well uh, now that the ordinance is adopted and it will be operating under the city code provisions. And that is all I have for tonight. Thank you very much. So we have report from council members. And I think that uh, Joe Abuganum has been um, a good sport in his um, exclusive spot over there. And if he would um, begin with the reports, 
that would be um, wonderful. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> uh, as it relates to first ward stuff, we have our first ward meeting next week at Jack Roberts Park at six o'clock. Uh, we are going to be doing our meetings, as I said last time, bi-monthly. So it'll be the only one until October. Uh, in addition to Jack Roberts Park, uh, they have Jazz on the Green next week, July 28th from 5 to 9 p.m. And the other thing I wanted to tell people about, if they haven't already heard, uh, in a different life, I wanted to be a pilot. I never got the opportunity to learn, but for those up to the age of 17 young pilots, Morgantown Municipal Airport is hosting their Young Eagles Day, August 6th from 10 to 4, and that includes a free plane ride. So for any possible future pilots, which as I hear are captains, we need more in the U.S. is a good job opening opportunity. It's a good chance for them to come check it out and learn what is involved. So, other than that, I don't have much to report. And thank you. Mayor, quick that? question, if I may, for yes. Uh What was the date of the jazz concert? July twenty eighth. July twenty eighth. It's a Thursday from five to nine. Thank you. And mm. then the neighborhood association meets on Mondays. Monday. Next this coming Monday. Monday at six o'clock, Jack Roberts Park. Yeah. Great. All right. Councilor Kowecki. <coughs> Just a note of uh, approval there. That uh, jazz concert in that location, that's a wonderful venue. Uh, would recommend that to anybody. <coughs> the, uh, I have very little to report. I do have, uh, I'm, I'm very grateful to hear that the governor has uh, given us the money for Beechhurst. Uh, that's been a long awaited item and uh, happy to see it. I think it's unfortunate that it ends at Campus Drive. I think it really needs to extend beyond Campus Drive all the way up to uh, Fayette and perhaps even a little further along. And I'd like to see, uh, uh, I'd like to see us advocate for that and pay attention to it and make that well known to uh, whoever can help us achieve that particular goal. And that's the end of my report Thank and my you. wish list. <laughs> hey, this is your moment, Councilor Vega. I'm a little all over the place with my list for my report. Um, the first thing I'd like to say is um, that I was happy to go to Starport um, this weekend. They reopened and as a person who used to go there a lot, it, it feels good to have them back. Their space is beautiful. Um, they are a space for families until 9 o'clock, and then after 9 o'clock, it's for folks that are 21 and older. But please support your local business and support them in this first month-ish that they're going to be open. Um, I was also grateful to join folks in Morgantown, well, from Morgantown in Charleston on the 9th for a rally for abortion access in Charleston. Um, I actually met up with a couple of um, community members that I didn't know were gonna be there and they saw me when I was organizing the event and they came up and they said that they were really happy to make the drive from Morgantown. So shout out to you all. Um, I have a question and I've asked this a couple of times um, and I think we've kind of figured out that we're not really sure exactly where this is at right now, but I've gotten a couple of questions about Sharps containers. Um, and I was wondering if we knew exactly when those were going to be put in or any updates with that. That would be really great. Um, I'll keep going and then I'll, I'll, I'll see if anybody has anything to say about that. Um, on behalf of Sister Cities, we are very grateful for Council's support on the changing of our resolution for our group. There's a ton of people who want to join, well, not a ton, but there are a handful of people that want to join Sister Cities Commission, um, and I think that this is a really good opportunity to bring people with different types of expertise and experience to the group, so thank you all for supporting that. 
Um, there is a single stream recycling event this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the City Garage, which is at the corner of Greenback Road and Mississippi Street. If you don't have anywhere where you can recycle your things, please come to this event. They have them, I think, every month. Um, so that would be great to support that. And um, to, uh, I, I should have said this when um, our mayor asked for any updates on the commissions, and I don't have any specific updates, but um, I don't know if anyone's noticed <laughs> seeing the news, but half of Europe is on fire right now so we are dealing with some extreme heat as of lately so I hope that at our next meeting we can talk about what we can do for our folks who are experiencing houselessness not only in the winter but when we also have the extreme heat in the summer and that would conclude my report thank you very much thank you mayor uh, Councillor Agu Ghanam overlooked the fact that it's a very exciting time for Jack Roberts Park. There is also a movie in the park this Thursday. We'll be showing Boss Baby. Uh, the family games and things like that start at 7. The movie starts at 9. So make sure you let your neighborhood know about that. <laughs> um, on behalf of Bow Park, I would like to thank council and the city for their commitment that we've been showing especially with the budget revision towards our capital improvement projects um, it's a very exciting time at Bow Park we have a lot of things going on and it's really great to have people around us that are supportive of that um, the Woodburn Association of Neighbors will be meeting tomorrow, Wednesday the 20th at 7 p.m. at the Woodburn Community Complex. They will be very excited for an update on the Richwood project, so thank you to the city manager for that. Um, I have received a lot of, I won't necessarily call them complaints, but I've heard a lot of grumbles about all of the work that's going on around town right now, mostly from my son. Can't seem to go anywhere without getting stopped in traffic several times with flaggers. I've been trying to remind everyone that now is the time to do that. Um, we are, you know, at half the population that we usually are, so please be patient and work with us. It's good to get it done while the students are gone for the most part. Um, I have received a few specific complaints about some of the paving projects, um, some specific areas. So I received those this afternoon. I will forward those on to the city manager. But other than that, I'm looking forward to the Municipal League Conference. It's, she says, in about a month. It's actually two weeks, not that I'm counting. Um, trying to get ready for my presentation, which I'm very excited and nervous to do. <laughs> but the, the topic of the workshop that I'll be giving is leveraging your community's resources. It's largely focused on um, Hazel's House of Hope and the development and operations there and how that is working for us as a city, as well as some of the challenges that we're facing with that because it is there is a lot of interest around the state to replicate that model. So I have a panel of people who are working with me and hopefully we can share some of the positives and negatives that we're, we've run into. So that concludes. Thanks for doing that. Um, I, I would, it's positive to hear about the progress with MUB in the recreational access. So thank you for keeping that moving forward. Um, Kind of sticking with the paving theme, I was working from home today and was able to off and on see the entire section of Vandalia be paved, and it's quite a process to see how they come through multiple times, laying one side, um, compacting it. It's, it's impressive. It's very impressive. It's also caused a lot of my neighbors to ask, what about our state roads in the city, and is there anything we can do? either as council or as citizens to try to get more information. And, and I checked with Bill Austin today, who's in charge of the MPO, 
about is there a list there's not there's not been one put out on projects that are like a repave in nature for a larger project there is a schedule but not for repaving and so for for some of us who are on the MPO um, my question is should we direct maybe an inquiry on behalf of our community and county from the MPO or also from the city um, as a council administration to ask for an update on on our roads in the city that are state that's they're bad they're really bad and so people are getting pretty frustrated um, so that's that's something I wanted to put out there for discussion uh, on how we might want to do that I'll, I'll give you a report on that I know that <coughs> our city engineer has been working with uh, uh, region six or district six or four, four. of, of uh, DOH and right. we've been trying to work out a, an agreement where we we get uh, we get on the paving I mean you go to certain areas of that region's responsibilities and those those ro state roads are in pristine condition and I want to know why why it's not happening up here and I part of it is uh, you know the you have to kind of create some noise mm -hmm. sometimes and and so I, I just made a note that we need to go down and meet with them again uh, we've met with them a couple times and this time it needs to be a little firmer I think and I'll do that and I'll give you an update on that thank you um, additionally if I may add um, yeah. there's a committee through the MMPO um, that people from district 4 and our engineer um, often attend and so I could give you or anyone else was interested information about the meeting um, and uh, they're online so you can okay. tune in and ask them questions of people from District 4 um, just to just to weigh in on it. Mm -hmm. yeah, so something please, that you can does. add, so if we have a manager working from his end, and, right. um, it's an easy, an easy meeting to attend mm -hmm. and, um, and we, there's a lot of dialogue back and forth. Um, I think what we need is action. And I was going to ask if any of the dialogue evolved dates and location of when things will be done. Um, so we have asked for specific things in the past through that, and we have gotten like um, the bottom of Pleasant Street a couple years ago when they actually yeah. put mesh instead of just paving it, they put mesh in there. It was a result of being asked at that meeting specifically to work on that location, and then within a month or two they were actually putting some wire mesh in it gets torn up again but it's better than if it's just paved right. so yeah. and um, then there was a request made for the bridge over uh, Decker's Creek um, one side is very smooth and the other side has little red bumps on it kind of near the parking garage in the work district but um, the main on the main, on South University, on the main corridor there, and um, nothing has ever happened there. But the request has been made numerous times. So um, sometimes, sometimes we're in line, aligned and it works, and sometimes it doesn't. But it's good to just use every voice that we can, firmly, politely, and um, over and over again to see what we can get done. Well, if you could share the info on the next meeting, please, yeah. that would be yeah. helpful. Um, and I, and I have a, a request link for the District 4 DOH website that um, I'm going to share with my people that are asking me, with my constituents, um, and maybe I could share it with the uh, city clerk to include in the minutes if people want to act act on their own and, behalf as a citizen and that works and that works also so we've had several citizens in the Suncrest area that have used that and have gotten results and have pointed them out so great that, that's all thank you that's what it takes though thank you uh, so um, I guess I'll start off with uh, the Pride Parade. I'll mention it again. This is August 27th at 7 p.m. 
Um, the Pride Block Party is the next day at the Farmer's Market Pavilion from 1 to 7.30. Uh, we have 38 vendors right now um, and some food and live music all day, so it'll be fun. So come down to that. And then we'll have an after party at 1, 2, 3 after that. So it's like all day. Um, it stressed me out. So um, <laughs> this past week, I uh, attended the Suncrest Neighborhood Picnic, um, which uh, was great. Um, we, uh, Matt Cross had the foresight to line it up with a Kruger Brothers concert that was happening uh, at the same time, which was great to attend just walking up the hill and you could kind of walk back and forth if you wanted to. Uh, it's good to talk with neighbors at an event like that. Um, deputy mayor was there, the mayor was there, and so was um, Councilor Kwecki. So um, good to see everybody, have the kids play. And then um, I also uh, attended a little neighborhood meeting uh, about Turtle Park with the mayor and Matt Cross and uh, Beth Rota, is that correct, Mayor? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Yep. Um, just to talk about um, things that we could do to improve the rain garden there. Uh, that was very productive. Um, little <laughs> meeting that we had. Um, so hopefully we can get that started uh, sooner than later. Um, also, I was, I was very impressed with the July Arts Walk. Um, in, in the little bit of time I was able to, to get down there before uh, I had to go to work. Um, just uh, very vibrant, um, and, and I really think that events like that are just a great use of our downtown space. Um, makes it very welcoming. It's just the city, you know, feels very alive when you're when you're at events like that, um, and it, it it was really kind of uplifting, honestly, to be there. Um, so I really appreciate everybody's everybody's time and effort that they put into that. It's it's a very uh, diverse and community-wide event and um, so everybody who puts time into that it's I really appreciate it it's it's a great um, thing for our community um, uh, I was glad to hear uh, from the mayor earlier that um, we're looking into scheduling um, some time for the unsheltered homelessness uh, committee um, we are getting uh, closer I feel like we're getting a little bit up on it uh, with winter time and um, just if we could work with community partners to try to have like a good comprehensive plan for a warming shelter this winter uh, so we can kind of smoothly transition into that that would be great um, and so any discussion that other counselors administration um, want to have on that even if it's outside of the committee obviously that would be great. Uh, just don't want to get too close and then we're like scrambling. It's stressful. Um, but that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. I guess you can inspect me. <laughs> so there's nothing so close to home as your own water pipes. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to mention that it's kind of cool that MUB is working right now. Um, actually, I think they finished this morning. Um, at least part of the, um, so uh, Fair Lawns is slated to be paved this summer and in preparation for paving, which we really appreciate when um, we get utility work of all kinds done before the paving work rather than in the opposite. And once you pave, then have utility work done is not a good idea. So um, for the past couple of weeks, um, MUB has been testing the water pipes on Fairlawns. And this morning they um, brought in a new fire hydrant and plopped that in the middle of um, the neighborhood. And uh, so now we have some new water lines where they're needed and a new fire hydrant. And then I assume and hope that we will be having paving next. And I was wondering if um, one of our next meetings we could ask um, our engineering department or public works department to make a report on kind of the progress because I think this is the biggest paving season we've ever had and it would be great to have a report on kind of 
what's done, what's in progress, um, and how you know how we are doing it at completing it. The other really cool thing that happened is Suncrest Primary School, which is now a pre-K location, had a new stretch of sidewalk added to it. It's right in the heart of the neighborhood, and it's um, it's in the seventh ward, but it's kind of right kind of between the seventh ward and the fourth ward, and it's a central location where kids wait for the bus to get to the elementary school and they play after school and so it's it's always been strange that there wasn't um, on one side of the school property there was not a proper mm -hmm. sidewalk it was there was a sidewalk that was kind of high and funny and then you had to go down some steps and or down a really steep driveway it just was just strange so um, I really appreciate um, our city engineering department and public works department that they it was through a contract but um, they had the foresight or they recognized something that I just always assumed was going to be wrong. <laughs> and it's amazing to look at it when mm -hmm. it's done properly. So that was cool. Um, and um, also appreciate the really nice picnic um, with Chris Gluck on the grill and our city manager and our police chief also also came, and also um, uh, John Williams, mm -hmm. um, who is running again um, for House of Representatives in the state. And let's see, we had a lost dog for a couple of days, and it was really cool to watch all of the people in the neighborhood put up signs and ask each other how it was going and communicate across roadways and especially since the dog was um, returned home so that's that's um, that's really cool to watch people work together and it's funny how during the beginning of COVID when people weren't going to work very much you noticed all the interconnections between people and then when you have little um, a big feeling crisis in the neighborhood everyone's working together it um, it's it's really nice um, and I would also like to urge people who uh, council people and any others in the city staff who would like to go to the meetings at the um, municipal league uh, the very first week in August uh, not only can you see our um, celebrity uh, GIS and uh, Deputy uh, Mayor uh, providing some workshops, but you can also um, help play host to um, people who are coming here who would like to know who's on City Council and, um, and, and meet with us through the different social events in the evening. So do not feel as though um, you have to come to all of it, please. Um, pick and choose as, as people's schedules permit, but it would be wonderful to have a few more um, people participating just so we can kind of fill out the roster. And that's probably plenty from me. Um, I would like to, do we have a executive session? I think we do. So if someone would like to read us into both A and B, uh, under executive session, that would be wonderful. I move that pursuant to West Virginia Code section 6-9A 42B12 to discuss potential or pending litigation and West Virginia Code section 6-9A 4B2A to discuss personnel matters that we enter executive session. We got a motion. Second. Second. Thank you. And then if the clerk would call the roll, or we can just all raise your hands. <laughs> Agree. All right. <coughs> add who? Add okay. Oh, yes, please. You can add um, <laughs> Randy Atkins and the manager and the assistant, assistant manager and the attorney. That would be great. Now we need to have, yeah. Cupcakes, Danielle. 